Hello, and thank you for taking the time. Thank you, Transformative Play Initiative, for the invitation to this lightning talk. My name is Alexandra Schreiber, and in the next 10 minutes, I want to talk about building intercultural competence and role play dynamics that can support curiosity and reflecting on culture. I grew up in the northern part of Germany and had a love for languages early on. So living in different parts of the world and working there led me to creating mini games around vocabularies and language. One is a memory game on Austrian German words that I found very peculiar. And another is a um, role playing game that I play with my friend Giselle in France where we are les vainqueurettes des mots, and we are battling and conquering words, <laughs> nerding very much around pronunciation and spelling. I had a huge a kick when I played Movers and Shakers at one a, a frog conference in Vienna because of three reasons. One, my expectations were totally smashed and challenged. Two, is that I had to literally leave my comfort zone and talk to my game partner. And three, to this day, I can remember the feeling that I had when I was succeeding and proceeding in the game. And this was a feeling of excitement and joy. And this is something I want to recreate in workshops that I design around building intercultural competence. Uh, definition, intercultural competence is the ability to communicate effectively and appropriately in a variety of cultural contexts. It needs attitudes like openness, non-judgmental approach and curiosity, and a set of knowledge and skills. Uh, knowledge uh, is cultural general knowledge, cultural self-awareness, and skills are listening skills, communication, observing skills. Uh, observation skills and uh, outcomes are that building of empathy, able to shift frames of reference to put one's own way of seeing the world into perspective and to adapt behavior according to cultural situations. Um, on a note, um, uh, building intercultural competence does not happen per se just by talking or just by going abroad. It needs guided reflection and there are are a, a, a certain reflection models that do a very good job on that. So taking a look at culture, we can see that we're talking about a very complex and a dynamic process, which is constantly undergoing transformation. That makes it really difficult to, um, to grasp culture and to talk about it. And there are some uh, analogies that help us talk about culture. Nevertheless, it is always about people, about human beings who interact. And um, it is a set of learned and shared values, beliefs, and certain behaviors that is being shared by this group of people. Intercultural dialogue means negotiating new shared meanings and um, culture influences the way um, we make connections, form identity, and we perceive um, belonging to certain groups. The concept of fuzzy cultures um, explains that um, people uh, can belong to multiple cultural groups at the same time, making them like fuzzy, like with fringes at the end that can connect, and uh, that leads to multiple identities and uh, senses of belonging. Now, with this complex system, um, the, there is a main driver um, considered uh, for this lifelong learning process of building intercultural competence, and that is curiosity. So it's also the glue to obtain and to sustain intercultural competence and this intrinsic motivation that I got when I played or when I pick up words that is um, also influenced by knowledge and skills, right? So the more I know, the more things I see, the better I am able to um, um, uh, apply my skills. <laughs> and this um, uh, is uh, fostered by what neuroscience has found, the rush of dopamine. And I find this so interesting that the brain releases dopamine, which is the chemical substance for reward, that uh, it releases dopamine on the process, when a person is in the process. And the process involves um, dealing with ambiguity, uncertainty, with something that is unknown and maybe also 
potentially dangerous. So why does the does the brain release dopamine when a person is engaging in something that is very uncertain? Well, there are several explanations for that. And one is that sometimes it is necessary and it has a very immediate reason one has to adapt to certain situations. And another is that living a life is not only about just getting things done, but also to thrive, right? So personal growth is another very good reason to obtain intercultural competence. And in order to address the um, factors that uh, tackle curiosity, that, um, that, that foster intrinsic motivation in workshops that I design, um, I'm interested in what triggers, what triggers curiosity and what helps students engage in the process. So I have some examples from the classroom. Um, one is uh, a game that can be played um, in the classroom as card game and also as online version. It's called More Than One Story. Um, connects to building communication skills, active listening and checks in on topics like stereotypes and um, enables students to take perspective, hopefully also triggering curiosity. The second activity is dance impro, and um, it has originally been developed as a classroom activity where students engage in body movement and communicate um, in a form other than using uh, words. And they have to uh, deal with very much uncertainty, uh, have to be curious to uh, to find new ways of communication. And this activity checks in on mindfulness, perception, uh, perception and taking action. It has recently also been transferred to the online context where it is um, surprisingly uh, working uh, really well. And um, a very um, recent example from the classroom is Crack the Code. It is a um, simulation game that uh, we call a live action simulation game. It's live action because in the um, online uh, workshop course conducted mainly via Zoom. We have a group of participants who play the roles of technical engineers. They have to solve a problem about a broken GPS satellite. The game master who is mediating between the um, participants and the protagonist who is a native speaker of Hungarian and who, and who holds the key to the code of letters and numbers that the, the, the participants have to find out. In order to find out, they have to work together, practice active listening skills, practice communication skills, be open, <laughs> curious. So you, so you see everything that I mentioned before it comes together in this um, simulation game. Students have reported back that they were thinking about the how can this GPS satellite break down, showing such high level of immersiveness into the simulation game. And uh, the very interesting parts about the role playing dynamics that I find is that um, the aspects of shifting perspective and gaining new insights, what role playing can do, also, as identify as someone other really supports this um, building empathy that um, are learning goals for intercultural competencies. Building community and making connections is another strong uh, check from role playing dynamics to um, building intercultural competencies. So also here I see so many parallels and connections. It is important to have an authentic, relatable and relevant context in order to make it a very good uh, game and also leaving the participants with more questions than they had before. That is one goal. This is a list of references and I'm very much looking forward to questions around role playing games and building intercultural competencies. Please contact me via email and LinkedIn. Thank you very much.